All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over the chain rule. Now, what is the chain rule? It's basically just another rule that you can use for taking derivatives, but it's useful when you have complicated looking functions. So um, essentially when you have like a function within a function, like a composite function. So, so here's the formal definition. And I always feel I'm gonna show you like the formal definition that you'll see in textbooks. Um, and then I'll break it down and make it much simpler. But essentially it's saying that if you have a function of a function, let's say like y is a function of u where u is a, you know, a function of x, then you, if you want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, you have to find first the derivative of y with respect to u and then multiply it by the derivative of u with respect to x. So like if it's f of g of x, you find the derivative of g of x and multiply that by the derivative of f of g of x. Now, again, the best way to learn this stuff and understand it is to do some example problems. So I'm gonna go through some right now. All right, so we have, for this first example, y is equal to one over x plus one. Now, you may initially, you know, be like, well, I'm just gonna use the, pro or the I'm just gonna use the quotient rule, but you can, but what's also helpful about the chain rule is that it can make um, taking the derivative of you know, expressions where you might use the quotient rule much easier. So for example, I could rewrite this as y is being equal to x plus one, the negative one. That's essentially what we have here. Now, how do you take the derivative of this is Let's look at that, that, that we have an outside function, which is the negative one power. So you take the derivative of that outside function and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So what happens is that you'll get that dy dx, or we'll say y prime, is equal to negative one times x plus one or ne yeah, negative one times x plus one, all the negative two, multiply by the derivative of x plus one. But the derivative of x plus one is just one. It doesn't really change it. And so then your answer just ends up being x plus one to the negative two or negative times negative one. So. Okay, so for the second example, we have that y is equal to the sine of 2x. So we have an inside function, and let's emphasize it by putting parentheses around it, which is 2x. So you have, you know, a uh, composite function. You have the sine function, and you have the 2x function. So if you want to find the derivative of this, what you're going to do is then take the derivative of the sine function and multiply by the derivative of the two x. So we'll have that y prime will be equal to the cosine of two x, because that's the outside function. Remember the derivatives, the sine function is just the cosine function. So we just keep the two x there, so the cosine of two x, multiplied by the derivative of the two x. So let's just put this two x in pink multiply by the derivative of 2x. The derivative of 2x is just 2. And so your answer is just 2 times the cosine of 2x. I recommend whenever you have trig functions, put the, um, put the, put the input, the inside, inside function in parentheses. There's a lot of textbooks, they won't usually do that. And this tends to emphasize um, what, what's going on there, that you have a composite function. All right, let's look at problem C. Okay, so here we have the square root function, which is our outside function. And then the inside function is three X squared minus X plus one. So let's put that in um, pink. Now let's recall that the square root is essentially just like raising something to, to the one half power. So it's just this whole inside expression being raised to the one half power. So to find the derivative of this, 
we're going to get that y prime will be equal to the derivative of the outside function, which is just the square root function, which is to use a power mm -hmm. rule. So now it'll just be one half. Just keep the inside the same, one half times three x squared minus x plus one, and you power this down all to negative one half. That's the derivative of the outside function. Whenever you take the derivative of the outside function, keep the inside the same, don't worry about it. Now we take the derivative of the inside, which will just be six X minus one, and we multiply this whole thing by six X minus one. And then from there, you know, just clean it up accordingly, however, like your teacher professor wants your answer. Usually they don't want negative exponents. So let's bring that to the denominator. So that'll be, 6x minus 1 on top, all over 3x squared minus x plus 1 to the 1 half, where you can put that in square roots, all the same. Oops, and I almost forgot the 1 half. This is all being multiplied by 1 half. Let me put that, me put that 2 there. So. All right, now let's look at the next one. So here, let's remember what this two being in this spot means. It's essentially the same as the whole tangent function. Let's put that like that, the tangent of X, all to the second power. See, the two is not, is not the exponent on the X. This is, again, when you're first, you know, I'm dealing with trig functions, you're gonna kind of notice this weird notation they have. So just make sure you don't mix this up. So this is equal to this, tangent of x function all to the second power. So the outside function is the squared function. So to find the derivative of this, we're gonna take the derivative, we're, we're gonna basically you know, take the derivative of the outside function. So I'll have the y prime. We use the power rule for that, it'll be two times, again, we keep the inside the same, two times the tangent of x, all to the one, we just, we just power it down multiplied by the derivative of the tangent function, which is going to be the secant squared of x. And it's really not any like simple way to write that. So we can just box it up and there you go.